Hello there, and as usual, I'm Aaron from Last Day and Gamers, and welcome back to the Assembling of a Fleet series. So, so far, we've been building ships, destroying ships, and we've even been talking tactics. But in today's episode, we're going to be building fighters. Now, it doesn't matter how big or how many weapons you have on each one of your ships. These are going to be one of the strongest elements. Now, these are going to be the things that's going to be carried in your lighter transport vessels. Now, the problem is, you're probably arguing, is why don't I just keep everything aboard one ship? And now, stirring all your eggs in one basket does mean you can defend them all. So, say for instance, I opened up the belly of this beast and decided to store hangers in here for my small fighter ships. Now, that could work very well. But... If this ship gets a critical hit, or maybe it's right at the front of the heart of the action, fighters are not going to be able to return to here to rearm. So remember, fighters have got very little ammunition. But say, for instance, they come over to the transport vessel, like this one over here, it means that it's out of the action, out of the way, and they can simply rearm in complete safety. So that's what you really want to take in consideration. Because it's going to be a lot harder to rearm and refit a fighter on a ship that's under attack and it's all of its defensive systems are firing away trying to engage other targets. It's just a bigger risk to have. Anyway, let's move on. So there's a very important thing we have to take in consideration before we even start building the fighters, and it's something that you will often overlook. Most of the time, people don't measure or think about what they're actually going to put the fighters in. So this is the first thing I like to do, is work out where my fighters are going to fit in. Now, we've got quite a large hangar here, and we've got a small hangar, so we could have maybe a recon in the front, and then in the back, we could have two or three, or maybe even four small fighters. Now, we need to think about the rules. Are they going to be really heavily armoured? Are they going to be able to deal out a lot of damage? Or are they simply going to be big, bulky things, or maybe even little small craft? Now, each one of these little vessels is going to have its own little advantage and disadvantage. I mean, if it's small, it's going to be added to it, but it's probably going to be more vulnerable. And then if it's really big, it's going to attract a lot of attention. And with the fighters, you want to think about it as a separate battle between each other rather than them against these big ships. Because against the big ships, they don't really stand a chance with all the auto cannons engaging them and just completely ripping parts off them. Anyway, let's get started on the build. Let's take a look at three basic constructions you can use on your cockpit to make them a little bit more protected. Now, we'll start with the most simple. Now, this one works really well. What you're actually doing is you're moving the cockpit back into the hull so there's more angles. You see, that we've got more angles where it's actually protected. Still, in a head-on collision, it's going to suffer and most likely get taken out. But you've got the visibility of a standard cockpit minus the actual sides. Now, that, that's pretty good if you ask me. Now, if we move on, we have the narrow slit. Now, the actual cockpit is a lot closer to the edge, so it allows us quite a bit more visibility, but not as much as the previous design, and we've got that protection. But if someone manages to get some bullets through there, it's going to be a problem. Now, we have the moving cover. This is basically like a shield that you can pull down on your ship, and you can make it look quite damn interesting. So what I'm going to do here, is I've got it all ready, all I have to do is access the menu and pop the cover up like so, well let's turn the cover off, and we just need to hit reverse like so, and the cover actually comes up. Now you can obviously use it with cover up for just flying around casually, and it works pretty damn well. But well, the only problem is it has a few little issues in multiplayer, and just a few of it getting looking a bit bouncy. It works fine, but then it can also look a little bit bouncy. So as you can see, we move up, we have a little bit of bounce on it, but maybe that's just due to us needing to lock it a little bit better. So yeah, as you can see, it, it keeps its way up though. It's good enough for what we need it. So I'm going to probably go with this design for my fighter. So we've decided on our cockpit design and we're going to be able to keep our pilot relatively safe but now we need to move on to something that's quite controversial, wings. Now many space engineers players absolutely hate the idea of wings in space because you don't need them, you don't need them for lift and now I'm going to explain why I like to put them on my ship. Now if we think about it like the Apache or the Mi-24, they have wings but they're helicopters. 
Now, of course, they do help a little bit with the lift, but the main idea of them wings is to carry a weapon's payload. Now, if you just think about it, like the Apache, now imagine if they had no wings. Where would it carry its hellfires? Where would it carry all its missiles and armaments? I mean, it's pretty bloody hard to just strap everything underneath, isn't it? So we didn't have to make some sort of wing construction. So let's work this out. Now, what I like to particularly do is do with more of a swept wing back. But I think what we're going to do is stay with a standard sort of helicopter short wing design. Maybe two rocket pods, maybe four rocket pods on each side. And keep a machine gun in the center of the hull. Keeping a machine gun in the center of the hull is basically a last resort resort weapon. And then obviously we need to bulk it up and we need to also add connectors to everything. So I'll join you back in a second. So we've managed to mount the wings and the weaponry. So what we've decided to go with is three machine guns offset to the center of the hull. Now this is something you want to take into consideration with the weapons is the actual target you're aiming at because if your weapons and your wings are too wide apart you're going to be shooting around the target compared to if they're closer together then that means all your shots are going to go more into the center of where you're aiming in the direction of the ship so it works a lot more to your advantage having your weapons closer to the actual hull itself so we've gone with a short sort of attack wing sort of style eight rockets on each wing that should be enough for this heavy sort of ship oh we've got a little bit we need to patch up there so we've got the door sorted and now we move on to the engines now what i've done for the engines is i've tried to keep them as covered as possible and i've made them nice little covers little intakes so as you can see here underneath the actual thrusters themselves are quite well covered from a side attack there's not much sticking out Obviously, with these bigger ones, I tend to stick them out because it looks terrible if you, stick, if you keep them inside. And once again, with the side ones, you just want to limit their exposure, but at the same time, give them that ability to thrust without burning through something. Quite simple. Now, if we move on to one of the final elements, now, that is choosing a colour. Now, this is probably one of the most important things, because if you choose a stupid colour like yellow, for instance, like this, your ship will stick out like a sore thumb. And the other thing is, is if everyone in your squad has different colours, different units, then you don't know no, no, who, who's going to be enemy, who's going to be friendly. So you need to decide on a colour together. So what I particularly like is a grey of this sort of tone. You can see as it already breaks up from the background how well this is going to actually help to blend. Now, a lot of other players will use this similar tactic, so we need to know how if this is a friendly ship or if this is a bad guy ship so doing something as simple as say for instance we take a red line and we put a red line down our ship like so so we know that every ship with a red line down it like this will be one of ours so it's quite simple quite clear you can also double this up maybe you get some white out like this and then next to it put a white line so that just double sure that no one's shooting at friendlies so there's the white line going down the middle. Very simple, very effective. Let's try closing it up and take it for a little bit of a test drive. Now, the one thing I don't like about this ship is it seems to be a little bit bulky. But for a heavy ship, I guess that's not too bad. So we've got the cover here. We're gonna reverse that, lower the cover down into position to protect our cockpit. And there we go, our ship's pretty protected. Line of sight is not too good. But we've got quite a nice protected cockpit and we can actually go out and begin on attack or whatever we need to do. We've got all weapons available and we've got rocket pods on too. If we test them out, just make sure everything's firing. There we go, everything's working well. Very nice, simple design. The only thing that I can see being a problem is probably the little rotor in the cockpit. But otherwise you could take that off and do something different. But that is a nice simple military style fighter. Not too beautiful, but it's gonna get the job done. So it seems today we've managed to build ourselves a small fighter. Well, actually it's quite a heavy one, but it's got some interesting features. We've talked about wings, we've talked about the concepts of how to build your ship in a very nice sort of format, like tucking the engines behind the main bulk of the ship so in a head-along collision you won't have as much engine damage. I mean, things like the other ship, like Henry, he has a very weak engine base in any sort of prolonged fight. He would definitely lose an engine. But for something like this, engines are tucked in, out of the way. 
they're only really vulnerable from actually behind. We've also got the chaff system, that works quite well to deter the actual weapon systems, but it's more of an escape sort of weapon if you're getting chased down by a big ship, rather than attacking, as I'd like to say. The shield at the front works quite well, a little bit buggy at times, but it seems to do the job pretty nicely and protects the pilot from that position. So thanks for watching guys, and I'll see you next time.